Welcome to Dumbstock Live, brought to you by Mancini Sleep World. The Mavericks came in with a seven-game win streak. They left with an L. It's the Warriors building their win streak now up to five games, matching their longest of the season. The defense really coming through in this one, holding the Mavericks to 100 points in this game. That's Zina Keda. I'm Kareth Burke. We need to talk about one of the guys responsible for this. His name is Andrew Wiggins. Have He's you our, heard of him, folks? I, I've heard of him. He is our BMW <laughs> Ultimate Performer. Tell me about Mr. Wiggins' game. Wiggins' game was an all-around game tonight, and that's what the Warriors have been needing all season from him, and we've been seeing it in the last few games. Wiggins tonight, versatile in the way that he was scoring, both inside, outside, off the post, being able to catch and shoot, and this is what makes him so dangerous. When Wiggins is able to get in the post and do this, you expect that out of him. You expect him to be able to be crafty, scoring over his defenders, but when he can catch and shoot outside, that unlocks another level. That unlocks another level level that the defense has to play now because they have to respect that as well as they have to respect the people that are able to drive and, and dash into the paint while he's out there. So he creates beautiful spacing when he's able to do that and that is what he did tonight scoring inside, outside, all of the above. Oh, not to mention defense. Really, <laughs> really great defense. And don't get me wrong, he had Luka Doncic who still had his triple-double. Expect that out of him. But he made tough shots. Uh, Luka Doncic made tough shots against Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins didn't make it easy for him. And when they had to switch, the rotations that Wiggins had on point, long length was on display for Wiggins tonight. Yeah, let's just pause for a moment because I'm happy you mentioned defense. He is guarding the number one scorer in the league, Luka Doncic. That takes so much effort. And then on the other side right. of the ball, Andrew Wiggins is the leading scorer for the dubs. Correct. Can you talk about heavy lifting? Andrew Wiggins who is also at the podium. And just how important has it been for the past few games to, for you to be aggressive, especially without Jonathan? Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's been, it's been important, you know, just trying to, you know, help and do my part, you know, especially, you know, JK is out the lineup and, you know, he's a huge part of what we do, you know, so everybody has to pick it up because JK is a force when he's in the game. How much, how much better do you feel like your rhythm offensively is now compared to where it was earlier in the year? Um, I feel a lot better than before, for sure. I feel like I'm in a pretty good rhythm offensively and, you know, defensively. You know, I feel like our team is playing great basketball right now. So. Beyond, uh, beyond JK not being there, how much more of a responsibility do you feel when Steph's obviously not shooting the way he normally does. I mean, you obviously filled that void tonight. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, every, every game is is different. Um, and, you know, Steph has a lot, you know, on his shoulders, you know. What he does is, you know, amazing every, every night. Um, but that's the thing about Steph, even when, you know, if he's not scoring the ball a lot or, you know, shots aren't going in, you know, he's still the most dangerous person on the court and attracts so much attention, you know, and he can miss 100 shots. You still got to play him and put two people on him because he's that good and that dangerous. Um, so I just do my part and do what I can do. I was just watching the replay of the Draymond block on Gafford. What was your vantage point on that play? Man, Draymond's special, uh, very special. Uh, defensive mastermind, you know, he's... He's everywhere, you know, he's everywhere. He, he's got everyone's back. You know, that's that's what gives everyone else, you know, um, the advantage to just play play, play freely, you know, defensively, because you know you have Jermaine behind you. He's, you know, he's gonna pick up any slack or anything that happens. From a distance, it felt like tonight's game had more intensity than normal, which would make sense given what's at stake. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like that to you, these, you know, the last week or so, and now going forward and, the playoff push? Oh, uh, for sure, for sure. You know, we're, we're fighting for our lives right now. You know, we're fighting to stay alive, um, to put ourselves in position to, you know, have the chance to do something special. Well, you know, when you see the Mavericks, you're gonna see Luca. you know that, right? So um, how important is it though, as part of your plan to try and make him work on the other end? Because obviously that's when you can maybe take advantage. Yeah, I mean, you know, Luca's Luca. You know, I thought I played Pretty good defense, still had 30 point triple double, <laughs> you know? But, you know, my job is to make it hard on him um, and do what I can to kind of 
disrupt them a little bit on the other side, just attack and, and be aggressive. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know, for, for many years, the Warriors, you know, you, you were going to get 50 or 60 from Steph and Clay combined almost every night. You don't see it as much now because, they, you know, they're getting on a little bit and you guys are being more of a part of the offense. How important is that formula that, you know, guys like you and, and BP and Moses and JK when he's available, that you guys are able, you know, to kind of give those guys a little, a little bit of a hand? Um, I mean, yeah, it's important. You know, every game is different, you know, especially this time of the year. You know, it's been a long year. <clears throat> um, so, you know, the young, younger guys definitely have to step up and, you know, even, you know, Moses, JK, BP, uh, uh, Trace, they've done a, a hell of a job, you know. I don't know. <laughs> the uh, the past week or so is probably the best like stretch of defense this team has played. What mm -hmm. has been different uh, that you guys are doing in the past four or five games? Um, we're just locking in. You know, that's that's what it comes down to. You know, guarding your man and having each other's back. You know, and we're trusting each other defensively and having a, a tight show. I think it was kind of cute to see a huge smile from Andrew Wiggins talking about how you can play good defense on Luka and he still arrives at a 30 point triple double. But I think Andrew Wiggins is really going to like what he sees on the tape. Uh, Wiggins aggressive early in this game, trying to get his points going as well. It feels like the Warriors are trying to draw up plays for him early, get those touches, get those buckets. And there was something that uh, that you noticed uh, kind of early in this game. For sure. Earlier in this season and throughout this season, we've seen a particular play in which Jonathan Kamiga gets a back screen from Steph Curry and gets open. This is the same play. Steph Curry comes up. He's going to get a ball screen, but not really supposed to get a ball screen. That's a decoy. You see Klay Thompson. He can go off that screen, but he's actually supposed to come off of a double screen with Andrew Wiggins. But what happens? Steph Curry picks off his man, and Wiggins is wide open. So Steph is about to go set that screen on Luka, who's not paying attention. Wide Wiggins open. wide open. This is key that Wiggins can hit this shot. Mm -hmm. Earlier this season, he was not hitting that shot. And it was Klay Thompson coming off of a double back screen open in the corner that was supposed to be the shot. Klay Thompson doesn't have to keep running out because Andrew Wiggins just finished that play. And what has happened when usually that's Jonathan Kaminga in that play. And he has been able to hit that shot or catch and drive. Okay. This time, it's Andrew Wiggins. When he or Kaminga are in that position and able to close that shot, the, the Warriors have weapons, weapons on weapons on weapons, and that is a wonderful execution of that play. Okay, the Warriors needed to go to their depth tonight because we're talking about Andrew Wiggins, the leading scorer with 23 points. He was the only Warrior who had 20 points in this mm -hmm. game. So you had to get contributions from everywhere. Enter the bench mob, outscoring the Mavericks 39 to 13 in this one. There's Ooh. CP3 arriving at, I think it was 14, hang on, where's my eye? 14 and five. Um, to have him coming no off the bench, sometimes I still go, oh, okay, he's coming off the bench. But yeah, as the leader of this bench mob here, they got contributions from everywhere. I mean, where where should we start? We can start with the highest plus minus lineup tonight. CP3 with Gary Payton II, Moody, Trey Jackson Davis, and Paz were a plus nine overall. That's higher than the starters who had eight turnovers. That lineup only had one. You think about their contribution and the way they contributed, 12 points total, but 83% from the field. This is what Chris Paul does. This is the impact that he has on a game, being able to go out there, set the pace, set the tone, and as of late, be able to create his own shot. If you looked at Chris Paul's shot chart tonight, he was able to score inside, in the mid-range, and also from outside. And he was able to be resourceful. He made what he was able, uh, what he was able to make out of the defense. That's how he was able to find his shots. Half of the time, he wasn't looking for himself, mm -hmm. but it just so happened that that's what the defense was giving him. And he's a smart player, so he's going to take it. There was one uh, play that he dribbled up, and it was barely a screen. It wasn't even a true screen. It was like a rub screen in which his defender just got stuck a little bit behind the screen. And he goes off the wing and goes, oh, no one's going to come with me? Cool. Let okay. me put that up. That's a three for me. There you go. Boom. 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 Is that one of his nicknames, too? Boom? I wish. I mean, I it could be. It, it could, could be. be. Yeah, there you go. Because um, he mic drops a lot. 
<laughs> in these games, as of late, especially, but tonight for sure. <laughs> Lots to look at here. Uh, Brandon Pajemski, a plus 17. Moses Moody. Yes. Four three pointers in this game. That's more than Steph. That's more than Clay. A spark off the bench. I feel like we need to say he's perhaps a bonfire off the bench lately because Moses stays ready. He works on that shot. His contributions right now are going to lead to some very difficult choices for the coaches when they have to tighten this rotation. <laughs> Very difficult choices for the Warriors coaches, but also for opponent coaches, because as you can see, him coming off the screen right here, beautiful execution. He's ready, his jumper is automatic. But a lot of the other shots, that was the only screen, only screen, off screen jumper that he took tonight. A lot of his shots are coming off of being wide open. Defenders forgetting about him. Mm -hmm. Defenders allowing him to just come into the trail position or being stuck in a corner and him just being ready every single time. And so what you're going to see with a Moody is a lot of teams trying to figure out, do is he a threat that we need to pay attention to a little bit more uh, when he's out there? Because he hits open shots. He's always ready. And so you really want to see more of him on the floor because it's going to it's going to switch some things up from a defensive perspective for the other team. All right, so Wiggins coming through, the bench coming through, and then overall for the team, the defense coming through. Yes. We know who is the leader of that defense. It's Draymond Green. Four steals and a very key, perhaps game-winning, late block in this game to make sure right there on Cafford. Ooh. Okay, and flex on him, Draymond, because he knows how important that was. And you have to remember that right before this very play, on the other end, Draymond got blocked, declined at the basket, and he gets this block and goes back on the other end and then scores. If that's not making up for what you saw before, mm -hmm. you thought... <laughs> Sir, you thought, and he came back, got the block, and then went the other end and got a bucket. And this is what we're seeing out of Draymond as of late, particularly in the second half uh, against the Spurs, coming into this game, Saginaw, Michigan, mm -hmm. showing up. Draymond is putting the ball on the deck, looking for his own shot, being able to go. I mean, there was one call that, I mean, one play that ended up, you know, with the blown whistle and dead play, but man, Draymond put it on the deck and was about to dunk. I was like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, we see you. This man is still capable of doing that. And when he's energetic and he's focused and he's all the things that Chris Paul gave him accolades for in his postgame presser, competitive, uh, someone that just gets it, someone that wants it so bad, passionate, that's what can come out of Draymond Green's game. And it's been fun to mm -hmm. see. Yeah, it's like vintage Draymond. And these are extremely Correct. important games for the Warriors. He knows that. That's why his ejection in Orlando was so disappointing. But Draymond making it up for the team, showing, you know, he will be there for his guys. Against the Spurs, 21 points. His line was 21, 6, and 11, and he backs it up tonight in a game with a totally different flavor. Oof. But you see everything that Draymond has in his bag to make sure he can help his team win. 21, 6, 11, 6. Yes, I forgot the steals. <laughs> like, yes. that's a crazy stat line. Yes. And then you come into this game and you repeat the same level of tenacity on both ends of the floor. I mean, it's it's always funny to see these things coming together right at the last minute, mm. right? You funny, wish you could Funny, funny, ha ha, funny. Oh. I, I got gotcha. you. You know listen, what I mean. <laughs> listen, if they come together, you turn the page. The postseason is a new animal. Exactly, exactly. But if you if you want a team to come together at any point of the year, it's definitely right now. And the Warriors are building off this momentum, particularly because Draymond Green and Andrew Wiggins are waking up and it's beautiful. Okay, if it comes this time of year, fine. Whatever time of year it feels like coming. They'll take it, we'll take it, we'll all take it. <laughs> when we come back, we need to talk about some of these tough decisions because we know JK is not in the lineup right now. He will return. What does Steve Kerr do with all of this depth? Tough decisions ahead. Can the Warriors shrink the rotation? Oh my goodness, that's hard. We'll be right back on Dubstock Live. Dubs Talk Live is presented by Mancini Sleep World. Visit Mancini Sleep World during our We'll Pay the Sales Tax event. Save big on premium mattresses, plus free delivery. Hurry in now or visit us online at sleepworld.com. All right. And us, Otis, Dino, Johnny, all up D, Cat. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us. We've got some interesting, interesting opinions in here when it comes to reducing the rotation. Uh -oh. uh, Moses deserving of more minutes. Clay should get reduced. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Otis saying, yeah, that was a huge block right there. 
Um, it's always fun to scan here. Lots of discussion in the comments right now about how Steph does not get a lot of the foul calls. Did you see the picture that I think it was Warriors Muse posted of Steph just in a, a forest of Girl. arms? It was like four arms right there. Clearly a foul. It was a f it was an arm bar. Yeah. It was literally like what your mom does to you in the car <gasps> when, <gasps> when she's about to break. It yes. was a full arm bar over Steph's curved arms trying to get an, a layup. There were some wildly missed calls tonight. And I'm not a person I know, that's we, like, we're really trying to get, not to get hung up on not, that kind no, of stuff. No, yeah. no, that is not what we're about. Yeah. And I don't ever really call it. But man, tonight there were about two or three that I was like, this is not, like, this is dangerous almost. Mm. So it was, it was a tough one. Uh, definitely played through it. Didn't have his best night, but I think that even going into the basket, still going into the basket by the end of the game, you can commend him on that, um, especially not getting the calls he was get, yeah. wanting early on. Zero for zero. Warriors went seven from seven from the stripe. Um, the Mavericks had 11 field goal, uh, excuse me, free throw attempts. So not a ridiculously a, a difference tonight, but yeah, nothing for Steph there. No whistle for Steph. Um, and, and that happened early in the game. So he's got to play through that frustration Correct. and, yeah. you know, he can't whine to the refs the entire game. He will let some of his teammates help him with that. Maybe his coach too. <laughs> Welcome back to Dubstock Live. We mentioned Andrew Wiggins was the leading scorer for the Dubs in this one. 23 points. A quiet night for Steph and Clay combining for 10 of 32, just 27 points. So when those two are either frustrated or if they just have an off night, what needs to happen? Strength in numbers. But yeah, you also see those Steph showing up in other ways. Seven assists stands out to me. Clay Thompson coming through with some big three pointers. They hit it just the right time. They were late in the game. Um, so you always know these guys will find a way to contribute somehow. But yeah, a, a little bit quiet for these two. And usually when it's a quiet game for those two combined, it's an L for the Warriors, but not tonight. Not this time of year. The Warriors supporting cast definitely stepped up. What happened tonight with particularly Klay Thompson, as well as Steph Curry as when shooting outside. The length, I think, of uh, the Mavericks bothered the two of them. The Mavericks were supreme in being able to rotate and cut folks off. You saw even Luka Doncic just being able to use his body really well to cut off a driving clay. Uh, there were several bunnies that they missed as they were going to the basket, and I think that that might have rocked them a little bit. But for the most part, they were coming out and defending really well on the perimeter and making it very tough for Klay Thompson to be able to get off of a screen or Steph Curry to get off of a screen to be wide open. However, when the time came for them to be open, mm -hmm. they hit some key shots. And these were lead-changing type of shots. These were momentum-shifting yes. type of shots. And that's the thing about basketball. It's funny. I was just talking to David Aldridge on a podcast today, mm -hmm. talking about women's basketball. But this applies here. The ball doesn't matter, doesn't care who shoots it. Right? No, the ball does not care who scores it. And in this case, tonight, that was the case for the Warriors. The ball didn't really care who scored it. It just mattered that it was scored at the times that it was scored. Can I just, uh, ball, vibes. It just cares about vibes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it That's just cares it about is. momentum. It's like, I don't know who's <laughs> shooting me, but hey, I feel good in these arms. Here we are. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, we did get a little bit of news pregame about Jonathan Kaminga. This was his fourth straight missed game. He has bilateral, so both sides, knee tendonitis. But the good news is Steve Kerr expects him to play on the road against the Rockets. Remember this week it's the Rockets, the Mavericks again. So, okay, it sounded like Jonathan Kaminga just needed this, this little stretch, this little snapshot of rest to get ready, to feel good again, and hopefully be okay for the postseason. Yeah, I'm not surprised he has that night is jumping like that. <laughs> and then also landing like that. The, yeah. the ability to jump that high with that level of force and then come back down on the ground, that's a lot of wear and tear on your knees. And so I'm not surprised that he's a little bit sore. And also, this is a good stretch for him to be able to just rest mm -hmm. right before they need to pick up all the energy and steam mm -hmm. that they need. And hey, the Warriors were able to close out some serious big-time games, not necessarily big-time in competition other than probably tonight, but being able to 
do it on the road and then close out tonight while he's out, that is a vote of confidence if you needed one from a Jonathan Kaminga to just say, okay, let me plug myself back in. My team is rolling. And so I think he is in a perfect position to be able to come back into this lineup. But here we go. Okay. We got to talk about what that's going to look like. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan Kaminga on the bench tonight in support of his guys. Um, his okay. knee was bouncing the whole time. I don't know if you guys noticed that. I didn't The actually. whole yeah. time his knee was bouncing. You can tell he is antsy to get back on the court. There you go. Okay, so he was in the starting lineup. I would assume he's going right back into the starting lineup because he also plays very well alongside Draymond and Andrew Wiggins as well. Yes, Draymond kind of being the connector between those two. Salute to Trace Jackson Davis for holding it down in the starting lineup for developing that chemistry with Draymond Green. Um, but it feels like JK is going back into the starting lineup. Okay, so you see Coach Kerr playing five guys on the bench tonight. TJD will be moved back down on the bench too. So that's mm -hmm. six people, six people right now that could be yeah. in the mix. Dario has been out with an injury. Not quite sure what's going to happen to Kevon Looney's minutes because Trace Jackson Davis has been getting more. But come playoff time, Steve Kerr really likes to go with nine guys, mm -hmm. sometimes eight guys. Yeah. They have 10 right now making a case, 11 what do you do? The first one that I would anticipate is Kevon Looney's minutes to be reduced and be interchanged for Trace Jackson Davis. So mm -hmm. he's going to go back to the bench, be able to get those minutes off of the bench, and Kevon Looney being a backup to Trace Jackson Davis, especially considering the way that he's playing right now. The other thing that I'm seeing um, or I'm anticipating is Gary Payton the second not getting as many minutes unless a defensive spurt is really needed. Okay. Because right now, even though, I mean, four of eight from the floor is wonderful, but I think that Kerr wants to go with his players that can generate more offense for him mm -hmm. naturally and easier. And so Gary Payton II may see some minutes get reduced. Moses Moody has made a case for being an offensive spurt off the can bench. We, just, we talk about this every season. We talk about this yeah, like we four have. or five times We do season. and we have. Yes. yes. Okay. He has so made a case. Is it finally? I finally, mean, you know, Moses sometimes you got to go to court several times <laughs> to get the verdict you want. Okay. But I think he's made a case to be able to be that, that, um, that person off the bench, to be able to be a three-point threat, a floor spacer, yeah. um, and also a, a defensive spurt as well. Pajemski is a non-negotiable off the bench to me. Okay. You don't get a, a guard that can get 10 rebounds. That's what he got tonight, folks. 10, 10 rebounds. rebounds. And you also don't get a guard that gets 10 rebounds and then pushes in transition. The way that the Warriors were running the floor tonight was due to Draymond Green pushing the pace and Brandon Pajemski pushing the pace. But when you have a rebounding guard, it makes me think of Josh Hart in New York Knicks. That's why he's so special. Mm -hmm. He can score no points, but he's getting 18 boards a game and then pushing the pace. That's what Brandon Pajemski can do. So non-negotiable there. What I think is going to happen is it's not so much going to be a change in the personnel as it's going to be a time change. Okay. I'm thinking people are going to come in a little bit sooner or come out a little bit sooner. Okay, so minutes tweak. Minutes than, tweak, yep. really, more so than personnel because right now things are gelling really well. Okay. And I think that people have proven their ability to come in and impact the game. Yep. So there's probably going to be a minutes tweak, people not miss necessarily being used as much uh, in the starting lineup or people being used a little bit sooner. In the, from the bench. Okay, and then maybe within this conversation, you know which guys Steve Kerr will go to, but does the leash on those guys get even shorter? I think so. Yes. I think so. I mean, yes, That's right. this is precision time uh, heading into the postseason. Impact or bust. <laughs> okay, okay. A lot of decisions coming down the pipeline, and hopefully once JK is healthy, once everybody is clear on that injury report, um, with respect to, to Dario, who has not had a lot of minutes yet, he, he's fallen out of the rotation, but once they get their main players totally healthy, then I think the Warriors have just a small runway, even if it's three, four, five games to figure this out, right. Okay, then they can hit the, play, the postseason ready to go. All right, when we come back, the postseason feeling very, very close. We need to take a look at the standings. We need to take a look at the calendar. Oh, man. All right, Draymond Green helping the team getting it done on the defensive end. The win streak for the Dubs now up to five straight games. All right, and I uh, saying Kerr has to lean on everyone because I think there will be a new hero each night. That's a great point. 
You're right. It is like one of those any given game somebody can really show up for this team. I actually see it a little differently than you maybe. I, I think GP2, because it's a team that values defense and because he's so good at point of attack defense, mm -hmm. I still think there's going to be a, a place for him. And maybe you're right. The minutes yeah. get dialed down. Yeah. Um, and maybe it is a situational thing, but I don't think he... I don't think he falls, provided he's healthy. Sure, you know? I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. need to say that he's going to fall out of the rotation. Right. I just don't think that he, like for yeah. example, you saw tonight. Yeah. Who was the first person off the bench? Not Chris Paul. Mm -hmm. Brandon Pajemski was. Okay. And when you think about why P pace, mm -hmm. he provided an immediate change of pace. Yep. Then who came in? Chris Paul, Moses Moody, okay. GP two. Okay. And that's what I think is. That's what I'm trying to insinuate with with GP two is that. He's not going to be the first person off the bench, but he, which he has been sometimes yeah, yeah, throughout yeah, this right. season. Yep. I think that he's going to be a second or third choice mm -hmm. as opposed. And then it's also going to be based on defensively is do we need defense right now? Mm -hmm. That's how he's going to be a little um, evaluated in terms of how soon he's coming off. In my opinion. Can you repeat that flow? I didn't hear you. Just talking to our producer. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you. I mean, tonight, when you need somebody else to take over on Luca, that goes to GP2. And when you want to make, it was kind of interesting, when you want to make Luca play defense on you to see if you can tire him out, that GP2 did need to be a shooter tonight, which was, which was interesting. Um, I liked his dunk. I wanted to ask him about his dunk, but he didn't yeah. the post game. And that's the thing. Yeah. He, he got that dunk off of many ways that he gets the dunks, yeah. being forgotten about. Mm -hmm. He you. was behind the defense, you know? That's what he told us once. They forget about me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. That's so funny. How are you so efficient? They forget, they forget about, about me. me. <laughs> hey, Dumb Talk Live, we're back. Let's take a look at the standings. Warriors feeling good about their fifth straight win, and yet still parked in that 10 spot. It will be very tough to move from that. They got to look ahead to the Lakers. They also have to make sure Houston doesn't catch them, but Houston has cooled off. You can see that the Warriors are three. Is that two and a half or three and a half games ahead? Anyway, it's enough two distance. <laughs> Thank you. It's enough distance that when the Warriors play Houston uh, next, the game game doesn't feel like it has such hot, hot heat because the Warriors have built enough of a cushion. All right, so that game coming up on a back-to-back -back that's Thursday and Friday when they see the Mavericks again. There's going to be a quick stop at home for Utah, back on the road, and then it's almost time for the season to be over. Last game of the regular season, April 14th, tax day is the following day. <laughs> that's the 15th. Get your taxes done. Look at you adulting. Get that money it. back. Get that money back. Okay. What? Couldn't there be some sort of ad campaign for Draymond and H and R Block oh. or something? I mean, come on. He's been in several campaigns as of late. I've seen him all over the the tournament games uh, ads. But yeah, they've got 16th and 17th back to back sets coming up. And you're right. Going into Texas, mm -hmm. you know, tonight. I don't know if you guys heard, but. This ain't Texas by Beyonce was playing all night long. Chase Center so petty for that. But mm -hmm. they're going into Texas. Houston doesn't feel as scary as they did just a few games ago when they were nine straight. Sure. So I'm sure they're feeling good into that road trip. Okay. Seven games left for the Golden State Warriors. That schedule is shrinking quick. Postseason coming up. We'll continue the conversation on YouTube. Oh, here goes Grant. Okay, Rockets one and two since Eason decided to poke the bear with that. Whoa. Okay, so that's what I was thinking. Come out to play. That's Rockets exactly three. What I was like, I wonder yes. if he regrets that. Yes. <laughs> well, the Rockets wins, and I don't want to minimize anybody's wins, but some of the opponents were on the soft side. That's okay. Oh, well, you know what? I didn't even I didn't look at the the full list. What was that's, it that that's, stood I need out? To take a look there. But like it was like I think they had one against the Spurs as well. You know what? I'm not even gonna go there. I'm not. No, I'm not. You know because <laughs> they had some good wins too. They did have wins. Sure. Yes. So okay. Sure. <laughs> well, you know, you no bolts and board, no nothing. A right. win is a win is a win is a win is a Correct. Because the Warriors would like to add up some of those wins. I was just gonna say that they should have the had. They just had. Do you look at the wins they just had that they needed to win? Yeah. That mattered. Okay. You know okay. that mattered. Orlando is a big team they beat them that mattered yeah but then there's what was it um the spurs right yeah spurs spurs are supposed to get beat yeah. but that still matters yes, it does you tax know? day <laughs> oh. pedro says good job girls like always yeah thank you thank you, <laughs> thank you. yeah hey everybody somebody's showing up late Alrighty. listen it's all about just taking care of business i mean yep. 
you can look on paper about teams you're supposed to beat and teams, you, you know, that'll be more of a challenge. But I don't think the Warriors are just like tearing up the paper this season. I don't know. Yeah. There's been some weird yeah. ones. There have been some weird <laughs> ones. But, you know, I think when you first came back at the top of this year, I think our very first show together, I was like, they have to just look at it one game at a time. Mm. And it's been that way ever since. And even when they win, it's like, you can't hold on to this one. Tonight, they cannot hold on to beating the Dallas Mavericks, who are a very capable team. It's cool. Take that box score, rip it up. You got to go do it again in Houston. Because it doesn't mean anything if you can do it against Dallas and you can't do it against Houston. Or you can't do it against Dallas again. Or you can't yeah. do it against Dallas again. Exactly yeah. right. Exactly so. right. Okay. That's it for us. We got places to be, people to see. My bad. Okay, yeah. guys. Pillows to cuddle. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Good see night, y'all.